sin or you're fighting a spirit or you find a person who is not, whatever it is you're fighting, sometimes it seems like the easiest option is just to just quit. You know what, I might as well just give in or I might as well stop fighting. And the devil is a lie. And the reason why we have to look to Jesus, and a lot of times with believers, I think that we we see crosses, we see we see images of Jesus, we, we, we see the holiday, and, and we and we sorry, understand me, in sorry. some respect of what it's about, but we don't really understand the weight of it, what oh, Jesus yeah. really actually did and what he went through. And we've heard our share of, of Easter messages, um, you know, where we, we're here, these dynamic messages about, you know, Jesus dying and him rising again, and we know that without him rising from the dead that we would have no hope. Come on. Says that Jesus went to hell, he took the keys from the devil, he rose on the third day, and then he came up with all power in his hand. So Jesus is all powerful. And uh, something I like to tell people, especially friends of mine who are not saved, do you know that Satan always loses? He never wins. It only appears that way. And it only appears that way when we look at people in the world who fornicate, they lying, they cheat, they doing all this stuff, they got money, all of these things are happening for them, and so we think, well, why live saved? Why do all of this? And that's why David cautioned us and said, man, as I looked on the prosperity of the wicked, my foot almost slipped. And a lot of times when we look at the world for things, we don't understand that the world's perspective is a little bit bent. Yeah. And so when we look at Easter, we know it under, we come, it comes from the, the holiday Easter basically comes from the goddess Esther who was supposed to have descended yes. from the heavens in an egg yeah. and, and and, and had all of these mystical powers and, and, and stuff and all of this kind of garbage. And there's people who believe in that. And where we come in, we say, no, it's resurrection. The reason why we celebrate Jesus' birth, or not his birth, but his resurrection on this day, mm -hmm. is because when you talk about Passover in Hebrew, you get into Christianity, yes. and it's just celebrating it from the time that Jesus went down and then the time he came up. And, and But it's significant in the fact, because if he did not rise, we always talk about him dying. But if he had not rose, we would have no hope. There would be no reason for us. There's no reason for us to live, to come to church. We might as well not be here if Jesus had not risen from the dead. And and one thing I, I find funny is a lot of times when you talk about the cross and you talk about resurrection, a lot of naysayers or atheists or people who who don't believe in Jesus the way that we do, the first thing that I try to, to contradict is his resurrection. Oh, uh, that really didn't happen. It, it was a it was a mirage. The people were high. They were they were in some type of trance. All of these type of things. It actually happened. It's there. And what's funny is is there there's a guy named Lee Strobel, and he has a book out called The Case for Christ. And he's it's funny because he said in this book, the more I sought out to prove he did not exist, the more I proved that he did. Yeah. A lot of times when people don't understand is that when people fight against you, and we in this season we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. But this is when the devil also acts up a lot. Yeah. This, this, this is when things happen and, and things kind of get rough. It's it's tax season and it's on the end of tax season. Yes. So all that money you got is almost gone. So you got that issue. You have the issue yeah. of you have the issue of just everybody going out and buying Easter clothes. You know, all of that kind of stuff. And, and when we do that kind of stuff, it's all fine and great and, and enjoy it. But we have to understand why we're here yes. and what we're doing here. Amen. And so when it says bearing his cross, and it says in verse 18, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, one, and Jesus is in the midst. And so that just simply means he was in the middle. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And the reason why I, 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 I took the point of bearing his cross is we've all seen crosses. We've seen rapper rock crosses. We've seen everybody rock crosses. And some wear it in mockery. You know what? They, they worship the devil. Everything's ungodly. And they wear crosses, but they are not Christians. They don't believe in God. Their lifestyle don't, don't show they're Christians. You, you, never, you never deny the flesh. You, you, you never... Pray, you, you never attend church, but you're rocking crosses, you're making a mockery. Then yeah. there's Christians who wear crosses, and, and, and to them, it should represent what your Savior did for you, and the fact that Him dying on that cross, and us wearing our crosses, is all symbolic of us carrying our cross. Yes. And we know that there are scriptures, and we'll get to those in a little bit, where it, it says that unless we deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Him, we're not even fit to follow Him. To even say that we're his disciples, that we're not willing to bear our cross. So in some respect, as believers, that's why we wear crosses. That's why a cross is significant. But to the world, a cross is just a cross. Right. To Rome, it was just a, a source of a punishment. That's right. It was just something to, to humiliate. And so the Bible says that Jesus bore the shame of the cross for us. And so because he had to bear his cross, we have to bear our cross. And this is where we have our dilemma. And a lot of times uh, in this society, I find, and like, 
Bishop was saying, all of the young people are not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, situation, circumstances put people in different places. Yeah. Um, I work with kids yeah. every day, and you see that the home life is, is just really messed up. And so because the home life is messed up, the kid is trying to find out, how do I get through this? How do I process this? So they ask certain type of ways because they feel that's the way I'm finding my place. But then it gets to a point when you become an adult, and then that behavior begins to get unacceptable to where now you should know who you are enough, or you should get with somebody who knows enough about God to discover who you are. And if you out there on the corner, or you him just sleeping around, doing all of this ungodly stuff, that's not your purpose. You're not feeling no destiny. And it feels good, but that is not who you are. That is not your purpose. That's not what God put you there for. It's not what you intended to do in life because a lot of times the devil sells us on sin. Yeah. Right? Uh, he did yeah. to Jesus, you okay, you weak, I see you going through this. Well, let me go ahead and tempt you. And he does the same thing to people today. And we always think of it in terms of uh, I don't know how many people are Illuminati theorists, but I am, you know, and I yeah, believe that yeah. when you comes to entertainment and, and sports and all this stuff, I believe that there are elite groups of people who, who are influenced by Satan. Yes. And the reason why every yes. word you hang on, every word they put out, mm -hmm. every song, every beat, everything they do is dope. Mm -hmm. They can come out with a pair of raggedy holy jeans and all of a sudden it's dope to have raggedy jeans on. Mm -hmm. And then it, it just don't make sense. But they have that influence because they sold their soul to get it. Yeah. And they understand that if we pump this enough, and, and when we do subconsciously, we feed our spirit that garbage. And so then when we come up against a situation, we can't process through it intelligently or through the word of God because all we fed ourselves is garbage. Yes. And so my, my goal is, as a, as a, as a leader, as a, as a teacher, my goal is to, is to let people know that God loves you with an unconditional love. Yes. Anything. Yes. Anything. Yes. Anything. The reason you bore that cross, the reason Jesus bore that cross so that, so that we could have a chance. It is not guaranteed for you. You have to accept it. And so when he, when Jesus took that cross, he, he, he bore it. He bore the shame of it. He got scourged, which is a, a, a apparatus that I actually had the opportunity to see in an exhibit one time. There was a, it's a stick wrapped with leather and three leather cords, which with pieces of sharp bone, maybe the size of my finger on it, and it's hooked. And he got whacked with that 39 times. And every, they say with every whack, and I watched a video, me and my wife watched a video in this exhibit. Every time they hit him, it ripped in his flesh. It, it went in his flesh and ripped flesh off his bone and it ripped muscle tissue out. So when it says we, he, bore our, he, he bore his cross for us, that's significant to me. And so when I go to act out of line or get foolish or, or, or try to turn up and act dumb, I remember like, man, dude, like you took all that from me. I'm not about to sit here and let you down because I'm feeling this way. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So sometimes it's just it's just changing our perspective of, of why we do certain things because we know that the enemy is out there and his his goal is to always get you to negate your own blessing. He can't stop you. He can't stop you from being. If you want to be an attorney, you want to be a preacher, you want to be a singer, you, he can't stop you. So what he tries to do is get you to turn on yourself. He can visit you. If he can get you to sin enough, he knows that God has to step back from you. When God steps back, you're open to whatever Come on. the enemy Come comes. On. Whatever he comes with, you're open to. Yes. And so when you're not guarded by God, you're open to Satan. And Satan Ooh. does not love you. He's never your friend. He's never trying to help you. Teach He's not trying to keep it 100 Lord with you. Jesus. Satan's job and objective is always to destroy you. That's right. If he's getting you to do something against God, it's always ultimately to destroy you. I don't care how good it feels. I don't care how people try to reason it away. I don't care how people try to contextualize scriptures. I was listening yesterday uh, to uh, preachers of Detroit. And one of the ladies was on there and she was talking about how God had called her to be a bishop. I'm all for leadership, and I, this is not a message about women in, in ministry. It just goes to show you how people try to contextualize. So she says, well, God believe God to call me to be a bishop. And so immediately I thought, well, the text says the husband of one wife. That's the text. And so she says, well, that was because it was some stuff going on back in the day where, and she tried to come. She tried to come. She tried to contextualize, and, and, the problem, and the problem I have with that is if you're not careful, these, these people who are supposed to be scholarly, they'll try to contextualize scripture and tell you that's not what it means, yeah. or this is 2015, as to say the Bible needs to be updated because back then they didn't have this, so it needs to be updated to accommodate these things, and the Bible is, is solid, it, it does not change, 
the, the, it should be living to you and it should help change you. But the oh, Bible yeah. does not change. So when it says the husband of one wife, you can't contextualize that and say, well, it could mean also the wife of one husband. Okay, and I'll say, okay, I could be with you on that if you want to contextualize it, but then you've been married twice. So you still, still disqualified. So my thing is, my thing is, is that we have to be careful when people try to contextualize, explain away, water down, kick to the side, it don't matter, it's 2015, God ain't sending you to hell for that, everybody doing it, all of this kind of stuff that people try to tell you. I'm telling you, remember what Jesus did and what he bore on the, what he, bore, he bore his cross for you and remember what that's significant of. And so we're going to get into it. And so he had this plaque put on here and I thought this was significant because even though the people wanted him dead, and this is another another example of ministry and me and my, my aunt has talked about this several times and she told me, you know, you need to be prepared for this. And, and I've already had this moment where the people praising you one one day, uh -huh. a week later, they were saying crucify him. Come on. Yeah. That's, how, that's how fickle people are. So yeah. if we only trying to get up and preach because we want a lot of amens and folks shouting and bucking and falling out and I'll cross on you and you pass out and that's what we think service is and a move of God is, then we're sadly mistaken because the world we live in, the more moves of God that actually happen that are authentic, are, people are going to get angry. And they're going to yeah. not want to see that. Yeah. Because people yeah. are getting to the point they don't want you to tell them about their sin. They want help. Right. Yeah. But don't, tell them, don't address yeah. my sin. Yeah. 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 And I can't help you without addressing your sin. <laughs> and it's not to say that I'm perfect <laughs> or I'm <laughs> without <laughs> sin. But it's to say that when we do sin, we confess oh, our yeah. sins. Yeah. Lord, I'm doing this. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Yeah. Help me. Help and that's a completely different spirit from I want to do me, but I want God's stamp of approval on me uh -oh. while I do me. God does not work like that. No, and that's the not. reason why he bore his cross so that we can take those things to him and he can throw it on the cross and we can be free and we can live our lives the way that God intended us to My live our God. lives. Amen. And to be effective. And so when we look at when we look at effectiveness, I always like to look at uh, leadership in church. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my passions I, I, I look at and I was telling my aunt one time, I said, man, like I'm so done with just church. I'm done with it. I'm done with, with these hypocrites, these folk who, who, and we all know about those who preaching and don't live it. But yeah. then, there's those, then there's those that, you know, ain't saved, ain't never been saved, but always got a word of advice that they can't follow. Oh, right. you, know, <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like I had a, yeah. I had a gentleman tell me, he stood me up middle of church. Uh, young man, God's giving me a word for you. Okay, you know, lift your hands. Okay, um, God's saying that you sleeping with all of these women and you're doing all of this stuff. And He said, "Stop, or He's gonna kill you." And uh, am I speaking to the right person? I said, "No, sir, you aren't." So, so, so then He says, "So then He says, well, son, don't fight the Holy Ghost. You can't, you can't fight the Holy Ghost. I'm not fighting the Holy Ghost. You know, I just that's not me." And so He says, "Well." He says, well, let me, let me tell you what God is saying. I said, man, look, let me stop you and just say some embarrassment because if you keep going, I'm, I'm going to get rude with you. You know what I mean? And the, and the church was packed, you know, and this dude was coming in from out of town. He was a big known dude, and his prophecies was just off. Come on. And I, and I was telling my aunt just yesterday, I think it was, I was saying, a mark of a prophet, a prophetess, prophet, same thing. Is when, is when they say something, it comes to pass. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't have to, if I'm going to prophesy to you, I don't have to say this. So, you, how old are you? Right. Are you, is that your kid? <laughs> is it like, I don't have to fish. Yeah. It's right, right, right. Said, right. Boom, boom, boom. And then you just wait for it to come to pass. Or something that's already happened that God gives to somebody to confirm something that's already going on in come you on, to help you be better. So I have issues when we come to church and we use we use days like this because we know folks going to come to church on Easter and usually on Christmas. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. a family.